Yeah, sometimes it's yeah. just it, you need to do the work. Like right. You, even if you have the talent, if you don't do the work, you don't. Right. You don't get better. You, I mean, mm -hmm. you by doing a lot of work, you, it really pushes you forward. Yeah, and it gets you that exposure. Welcome back everyone. I'm Sarah Scully with Vermont Craft Tours and today I'm here with Ben DeFlorio of DeFlorio Photography. Thanks for joining me, Ben. Thank Thanks. You Thanks for doing this. Yeah. Um, so I've worked with Ben in a couple of uh, personal scenarios. Um, he's recently shot an article that's going to be coming out in a national publication um, that I'll be excited to share with you whenever it comes out. Um, and But I've known Ben at least a few years since he um, was doing a personal project that we'll talk about um, where he took a, a great photo of Rick with a, a sheep draped over his shoulders. Um, and ever since then, I've been really interested in following Ben's career and his kind of uh, exploration of, of his craft and just wanted to invite you here to talk about it and share that with, with everybody. Um, so you, you grew up in Vermont. You're actually a native Vermonter. Yeah. yeah. I'm, uh, so we're in Randolph right now, and uh, mm -hmm. that's where I grew up, um, yeah, and I lived in the Upper Valley for a while, mm -hmm. but uh, I've been back here in Randolph for about 10 years. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, and did you, did you work for, you, you work for the Randolph Herald, uh, Ben mentioned, we're in their, the basement of their offices, it's our local newspaper out of Randolph, Vermont. Um, and you and you freelance for them or or work on a contract um, basis for them. I'm, right? I'm actually I'm technically an employee, mm -hmm. um, and I have been since 2011. Okay. So uh, one of their photographers took a sabbatical at that time, mm -hmm. and I tried a couple things for them, um, but then I started shooting on a regular basis. Okay. So I shot a lot of things for that six months, uh -huh. um, but ever since I, okay. I don't. Know, Kept you on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's sort of uh, when they have a need and mm -hmm. when it works into my schedule. But, okay. Uh, yeah. I'd probably shoot you know, 30 or 40 assignments for the new year. Okay. That's quite a bit. Um, at least it sounds like quite a bit. <laughs> I guess. Sure. I don't know. I don't know much about uh, photojournalism, so I don't know what, you know. Yeah. What, like mean, someone for the New York Times or something shoots probably every day for. Yeah. Like, sure. If you were, them, yeah. if you were a <laughs> staff photographer, you'd be shooting every day. So. Right. Yeah. So if you say 30 instead of, mm -hmm. you know, 250. Right. Right. But it is a, a weekly paper too. It's not it a is, daily. Right. So, um, yeah. So there's not as much of a workload. How did you uh, first get started with photography? Was it a hobby for you or something you studied yeah. in school? Um, it was, it was not anything that I have studied. So I have no formal education, but mm. um, uh, it was a hobby, um, kind of something I'd say I was interested in even as like a teenager, but mm -hmm. But, you know, just kind of mildly interested in it. Mm -hmm. uh, not something I pursued. And I actually, a few times I bought cameras and just never really learned how to use it properly. Mm -hmm. um, and, but I think digital had a, had a big kind of, was a turning point for me. Um, yeah, I could see that. I actually took a photography class in college mm -hmm. um, and got to develop, it was a black and white class, and got to develop our own negatives and do the whole process and it sure. was interesting but I could see if you had been exposed to that seeing the workload and also the sort of you don't get you don't know if your stuff is turning out until yeah <laughs> you know days later so it's definitely a, a steeper learning curve mm -hmm. I don't know digitally you, you know what you shot immediately so you can make corrections or right I, I don't know if people Shooting film would definitely take a lot of notes on, like, oh, I shot these settings, mm -hmm. and, oh, okay, so I can correct that next time, mm -hmm. whereas digitally, you can be like, oh, I can correct that right now. Mm -hmm. So that yeah. helps. But it, so it was just, um, maybe like 2006, I started taking just quite a bit with like just a little point and shoot camera, mm -hmm. like on vacations and things like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, started 2008, I bought a Still a point and shoot camera, but one that had all manual controls. Mm -hmm. And I pretty much just started shooting every day at the start of that year. Mm -hmm. And within six months, I was like, I, I've outgrown a point and shoot camera mm -hmm. and got a, a, a DSLR. Yep. 
um, which ended up being a kid for the next five years. Mm-hmm. Um, shot a lot of things professionally with. Um, but then it was a couple of years of it, it more being a hobby because I, I worked uh, in the construction industry. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I, I was um, mostly estimating project management. Uh-huh. And then yeah. when the economy tanked, yeah. <laughs> I, I lost that job and did some consulting and things like that. But right. It also allowed me to kind of pursue this right. this interest that you know I was doing on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I, and I knew people that were photographers, and they mm-hmm. kind of like, hey, you, you're doing some interesting stuff. Right. Do you want to shoot this, or right. do you want to help me with that? Oh, that's great. Um, it's sort of mentors, um, yeah. since you didn't have the formal training, is kind of a way sure. to get that support yeah. as you were developing your career. Yeah, I, I find it very interesting that you went from kind of a more traditional career, and then when the economy took a turn... You went to a more creative one, yeah, which you wouldn't necessarily think would work well, but I think a lot of people used that as an opportunity to kind of bring out like, oh, is this really what I want to keep doing, and can I really keep doing it financially? And yeah, I you all know, that. I'm not even sure that I I thought I was pursuing it as a career. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's now, snuck up on you, <laughs> but um, yeah, it was like I'm I'm looking for other construction jobs. There are no construction jobs. Mm-hmm. At that time, I ended up doing the uh, clerk of the work stuff for the Randolph Municipal Building. Oh, so okay. I, so I had like, you know, I, I was creating some income in the mm-hmm. construction industry and doing some consulting. But at the same time, I was like, when I wasn't doing that, I was going in, just going for a walk and photographing something. Mm-hmm. Or, um, so it, it was an opportunity, but it wasn't something that I necessarily thought was going to turn into a career. But yeah. I probably the other turning point was well in 2010 I started actually pursuing jobs to some extent mm-hmm. um, but then 2011 my, my daughter was born mm-hmm. and <clears throat> basically I didn't pursue any kind of work but I, I would take on some work but um, so I'm, I was a stay-at-home dad with her mm-hmm. and so I I have a camera and I have this kid. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I photographed her all the time. Right. Yeah. And I think that that kind of changed what I was interested in in mm-hmm. photography because mm-hmm. uh, I mostly was shooting things like landscapes or just random stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, anything that I saw that was interesting, but not really people. Okay. Um, That's interesting because when I think of your work, I think of you as a portrait photographer. Yeah. So I, I, think, I think most people do. Right. But... That's not really, as a introvert, uh-huh. like shooting people is it can be an intimidating <laughs> thing. Like, I, I don't know, I just like if someone was going to approach me and ask to take my photo, I, mm-hmm. I, at that time I may have felt like, well, I don't want to do that. Right. So that's how I felt about you know other people must feel that way. Right. Well, they do. From I mean, yeah. Jim Ben and I were joking about this the other day when he's trying to take my picture. Of, you know, it's like, I've asked you to do this. I've asked you to come here and do this. And I don't want you to do it. <laughs> I'm yep. shy. I don't want to be in front of the camera. Uh, yeah, that's so, I'm sure a lot so of common. People, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, I need a picture for something, but I don't want Yep. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Yeah. So, um, so you did this personal project um, of the, the creative portraits. Tell us a little bit more about how that, how you came up with that sure. idea and what it did for you. Okay, so that uh, I started that in 2013. Mm-hmm. Um, so 2012, uh, was, so I'm not pursuing any work, but I'm doing some work. Mm-hmm. And so I, I wasn't really doing a lot of construction work either because I'm, I'm concentrating on being a dad at that point. Right. But I'm starting to think like, okay, I need to look towards the future. Like mm-hmm. I don't want to, I want to continue to concentrate on being a dad, but I want to also still be, you know, just myself. Right. And uh, so I'm like, I need to do something to to push my career forward if mm-hmm. I'm going to do this, or at least have a creative outlet, even if it's, even if it doesn't push my career forward, at least mm-hmm. it's something that I'm going to do that's just me, not as a dad, mm-hmm. doing something. Yeah. And I have this increased interest in photographing people. Mm-hmm. So... I, I mean, I think I tried to come up with like more 
of a specific idea, but then I was like, you know what, I just want to get a lot better at photographing people and more comfortable. Um, so I'm going to just do an entire year of, with some certain parameters, doing portrait sessions with anyone who will, will, who is willing. And it had to be an individual. I wasn't doing like family or weddings mm -hmm. or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, I, like I, I was aware, like I don't want to step on too many professional toes of like doing free work. Right. But at the same time, I'm not going to get better if I don't do a lot of these. Mm -hmm. So um, I think I put it out on Facebook, maybe at the beginning of that year yeah. or the end of 2012, mm -hmm. that I was doing this project and put out the parameters and looking for volunteers. Yeah. So. I think that's a really smart way to move your craft forward, especially if you're something something like a painter or photographer, some kind of visual art or something else where you need, you need people, mm -hmm. you need models, and you need different situations in order to, in order, like you said, to kind of exercise your muscles, yeah. your artist muscles. Um, yeah, sometimes it's yeah. just it, you need to do the work. Like right. You, even if you have the talent, if you don't do the work, you don't. Right. You don't get better. You, I mean, mm -hmm. you by doing a lot of work, you, it really pushes you forward. Yeah, and it gets you that exposure, right? Because yeah. all those people tell their friends, "Oh, I'm doing this crazy, you know, photo thing," or they post it on their social media or whatever mm -hmm. else. So it gets you that exposure too. Get your name out there. Maybe they think, "Oh, the next time I need a headshot or a." bio photo or have a formal something to go to, I can call them. So yeah, it I, works on a lot of levels. It's absolutely. Really smart I, way to do it. I definitely have, have booked lots and lots of jobs mm -hmm. based on my personal work. And it was either, it can either be like a recommendation or someone mm -hmm. coming back to me to hire me mm -hmm. or just someone saw it. Um, yeah. I mean, even yeah. like, you know, companies and, uh, institutions have hired me yeah. based on uh, oh, personal that's, projects. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. And we'll show some examples of uh, Ben's work. Um, that's really neat. So um, so now you do, I guess, a mix of contract work and then also shooting for the paper. Do you have any other big clients that call on you regularly? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if I should name them. Uh, but I, I mean, you want I, to, or it's, just uh, well, like them. locally, I, I do some work for VTC over the years, mm -hmm. uh, Gifford. Mm -hmm. um, it's a local the, tech school and local hospital. The, yeah. the Brunswick school that uh, recently bought the Freestyle Oh, yeah. Yeah. So there's um, a private boys' school that's coming to town. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I do some stuff at Dartmouth. Uh, yeah. A lot of stuff. It's kind of. So I, I do a little bit of newspaper work. Yeah. Um, a little bit for the Herald, a little bit for the Valley News. Mm -hmm. And then I do a lot of this kind of schools or mm -hmm. hospitals, things like that. It's commercial stuff. stuff and yeah. just various businesses. Yep. Um, and then there's weddings. I, I did like a do I did a dozen weddings last year. Okay. And lots of portraits from like senior portraits or family portraits. Mm -hmm. uh, just because portraits. Yeah. Which I, I like those. Personal stuff, um, yeah. Yeah, so it, how, it, how, do you like, how do you like doing weddings? I, I've heard from other photography friends that they're very stressful. Do you find um, that, or is it... I, I actually don't mix? find it that stressful. Mm -hmm. um, but I think perhaps I, like the kind of client that hires me mm -hmm. recognizes what my approach is. I try and be upfront that I am... Uh, it's more documentary mm -hmm. style, um, that I'm, my goal isn't to be directing the day that it's not... But I don't want it to be about the photography, but I want there to be great photography right. to go with it. So mm -hmm. I think people who want that kind of approach that they they don't want to just be posing for photos the whole day. Mm -hmm. Those are the people that tend to hire me. Mm -hmm. So they tend to be a little more easygoing. Perhaps. Yeah. It's a, an, an organic um, match, it sounds like. Yeah. yeah. So it, I I think, you know, I shot maybe 45 weddings oh. and, and they're, I mean, almost... It's almost always been pretty relaxed. Yeah. So good. Yeah, I, I, I've enjoyed it, and it's it it actually it's it's a really good opportunity to photograph people, mm -hmm. um, and people forget about you pretty quickly, which is is good, I think. Yeah, 
I was telling Ben he doesn't have um, like a massive presence, which is actually a really good, uh, I think, attribute for your your line of work. I was, I was telling, I was making jokes to Ben that he would make a good paparazzi because he could just sort of hide in the bushes and you'd never know that he was there. Um, that's pretty funny. Um, do you, would you say that you've developed a specific style or like artistic approach to your portrait photography? Um, I have, but I don't know if I could define it. Uh -huh. um, Fair enough. <laughs> I, I think like people, what makes up people who know me Picasso, or yeah. have seen my work, if they see other work by me mm -hmm. and they, you know, it doesn't say that it's by me, mm -hmm. they might be like, that might be Ben before you. Yeah. Like it, um, I don't know. It, it could be that I like, I use the same focal lengths, mm -hmm. um, sometimes similar settings. Um, I don't know. It, it's it's kind of a hard thing to define. Yeah. But I, I do think I have developed a style. Yep. Um, and probably that that going back to that portrait project, that's mm -hmm. probably sort of when I, I did that mm -hmm. where I my work became a little more focused. Um, where I went from shooting anything to most of my work, mm -hmm. either professionally or personally is yep. is people focused mm -hmm. and looks like like my work right I yeah you do have a style i think i can't put it into words either but it's um yeah, yeah. I, I would say present like the people are very present in your photographs the, um, the, I, there you go i, I think my <laughs> <whatever> that means <laughs> my goal when photographing a person is for the most part is to have a picture that if one of their friends see it, saw the picture they would Say, oh, that really looks like them, and, yeah, and like happy them or right or captures their spirit. A, a good picture of them, yeah, without seeming like okay, I know that's them, but right, but wow, how did was, you get them to look like that? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. very interesting, cool. Um, I always like to ask people what is new or coming down the pike. Do you have any big plans for 2018? It's only February, so it is only February, but uh. <laughs> So, um, I'm, so we're in the Herald basement, Yep. which, uh, I've been working on for the last month to convert it to a studio. It's like, the studio is actually that way, <laughs> Yeah. but, um, it's, uh, it's been a fair amount of work to take a, kind of an old basement and clean it up, but it's, mm -hmm. it's coming along. And so I'm going to have a, it's going to be a shared space with the Herald because they, they have uses for the space mm -hmm. um, and people to photograph mm -hmm. but um, it will be a place that I can bring clients or I can do personal work or if it's you know terrible weather out there's mm -hmm. there's still a chance to do some photography right oh that's nice so I guess that's and, and other than that it's continuing client work but, mm -hmm. but it's kind of exciting to have a sort of a dedicated space yeah it's um I mean for a basement it's it's actually quite nice down here. It's, it's not wet right. or anything. Yeah. I can see, you know, Ben must have really <laughs> just butt off to get it because it's all cleaned out. There was, I guess, a lot of clutter down here and you've painted and everything. These, so it, uh, it feels good. stone walls were like flaking off. And oh, all that yeah. Stuff, so it was yeah, a lot of like scraping imagine. at the uh -huh. ceiling and Texture. Stuff. Texture, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and because you are kind of self-taught and developed your own career yourself really without a lot of formal training do you have any advice for other either people who want to get into photography specifically or just any kind of expressive art sure um well like i said earlier do a lot of work mm -hmm. like more than anything like even if you don't think you have any talent at it if you try and keep doing it you can't just a, a camera actually seems relatively simple to press a button. Yep. Take a picture. <laughs> um, and there aren't that many settings that you need to really master, but mm -hmm. they they're confusing. Um, mm -hmm. I actually, you know, I I know them all by heart now, although I'm constantly having to make adjustments. Mm -hmm. But trying to explain to someone what aperture is or what shutter speed you might want or mm -hmm or uh, ISO, these are some kind of core settings of a camera. 
they're confusing. Mm -hmm. So maybe you know, photography specifically, learning how to use your your tool, your mm -hmm. camera. Because if, if when you don't know how to use it, you're not going to get the settings that you want. But it takes practice. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, uh, well, I wouldn't say, I'm not sure that going to like college for photography is as relevant as it may have once been. Mm -hmm. um, but educating yourself either through some classes or YouTube or mentors. Mentors is a great way to do that. Mm -hmm. um, There's other things like Creative Live and stuff that have, sure. you know, like like a 10 hour class you could take absolutely. to get started or something. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a great program. Yeah. Um, but and there's there's tons of people out there that are putting great information out there. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, take that information and you know, figure out uh, what you might want to photograph, mm -hmm. um, and and do it like a, a personal projects. So those are are great for you know pushing yourself forward professionally or mm -hmm. just pushing yourself forward creatively. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think personal projects is, is something I really advocate mm -hmm. in you know, whatever kind of craft you're pursuing. Um, Self-directed things where no one's like shooting for a client versus shooting for yourself. Mm -hmm. like you, they're hiring you because they like what you do, but they have mm -hmm. specific needs, so you mm -hmm. kind of need to adapt to those. And so you're not necessarily going to photograph the exact way you might do something because they right. might not meet their their goals. Mm -hmm. But going out and personally doing it, you have. You have more time to explore and, mm -hmm. and be like, oh, I just, I, that's, that's no good. This is great. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, and it's fun. Or um, dial into your style, even if you can't sure. put it into words, yeah. I think. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Good advice. Thanks. Sure. Um, well, thank you for being with me today, taking the time. Cool. Okay. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, like I said, we'll link to Ben's portfolio online. You can check out more of his work. And stay tuned for more episodes um, for more artists around Vermont. Thanks for tuning in and joining us. Cheers. <laughs>